By a peculiar weakness of human nature, people generally think too much about the opinion which others form of them. According to Schopenhauer, there are three sources from which humans can derive earthly happiness. They are the following. What a man is, what a man has, what a man represents. These categories are not created equal. The first one, concerning your character, personality and intellect, is by far the most important one. The second, concerning money and free time, is of secondary importance. And the third category, about social status, honor and fame, is the least important. Yet, because of a flaw in human nature, we tend to overestimate its importance. We have done separate videos on the first two categories. This video will be about the third. Temper, as far as possible, this great susceptibility to other people's opinion, whether the opinion be one flattering to our vanity, or whether it causes us pain. For in either case, it is the same feeling which is touched. Of course, you might have guessed, Schopenhauer considers it foolish and stupid to base your self-worth and happiness on the opinion of others. But at the same time, he realizes how enjoying flattery and hating insult is a core part of what makes us human. If you stroke a cat, it will purr. And, as inevitably, if you praise a man, a sweet expression of delight will appear on his face. Therefore, if it's happiness we're after, we should try our best to temper this flaw in our nature. How do we do this? By becoming more certain of our own abilities and qualities. In other words, by becoming more confident. When you're sure of yourself, other people can't throw you off balance, either by praise or by insult. Let's say you love playing the piano and you spend your time continually becoming better at it. If someone comes along to insult you and tell you your musical skills are horrible, it shouldn't faze you. You know you play the piano well. You spent years learning the instrument. You're improving every day. You know what you're worth. The same is true of praise. If you're truly confident in your ability to play the piano, then when someone gives you a compliment, it shouldn't really be a big deal to you either. You know you play the piano well. You've been doing it for years. A compliment is nice, for sure, but it shouldn't change your self-worth, just like an insult shouldn't. Self-confidence is the key to building a solid foundation for happiness. Otherwise, a man is the slave of what other people are pleased to think. This is a lifelong effort we're talking about. Perhaps it's even impossible to completely eliminate the need for being liked, but the journey is still worthwhile. We must fight against this part of our human nature. In all we do, almost the first thing we think about is, what will people say? And nearly half the troubles and bothers of life may be traced to our anxiety on this score. It is the anxiety which is at the bottom of all that feeling of self-importance, which is so often mortified because it is so morbidly sensitive. It's also in this chapter we can read about Schopenhauer's analysis of honor culture. We might do a separate video on this if there's enough interest, but for the purposes of this series, this would take us too far from the question at hand, which is how to be happy. Honor culture, as Schopenhauer critiques it in this chapter, doesn't really exist anymore. In the century and a half since this work was written, the knightly ideal of protecting your honor and challenging someone to a duel has been lost. Still, if you want to see us tackle this subject, please leave a comment telling us. With enough interest, we'll do a video on it. The next section, then, deals with fame. Schopenhauer distinguishes two ways to become famous, through actions or through works. You might guess he prefers the second method. While actions are soon forgotten, unless they are immortalized by history, works stay alive. Of Alexander the Great we have but the name and the record, but Plato and Aristotle, Homer and Horace are alive, and as directly at work today as they were in their own lifetime. Fame is not something to be chased at all costs. Rather, fame should come on its own by the production of great works of art or by the doing of great deeds. Works which deserve to become famous must be ahead of their time. In other words, they will most likely not be received well in their own time. Fame is a slow process. But Schopenhauer is the first to admit that all humans, in some capacity, desire fame. Consider the following passage which is almost certainly autobiographical. From the point of view of human happiness, fame is, surely, nothing but a very rare and delicate morsel for the appetite that feeds on pride and vanity. An appetite which, however carefully concealed, exists to an immoderate degree in every man, and is, perhaps, strongest of all in those who set their hearts on becoming famous at any cost. Such people generally have to wait some time in uncertainty as to their own value before the opportunity comes which will put it to the proof and let other people see what they are made of. 
but until then, they feel as if they were suffering secret injustice. And fame itself will not make you happy. We are back to developing your talents and intellect, because not the fame itself will bring you happiness, but those capacities which allowed you to become famous in the first place. The truth is that a man is made happy not by fame, but by that which brings him fame, by his merits, whether they be moral or intellectual. With this we come to our conclusion. With aphorisms on the wisdom of life, Schopenhauer set out to write a practical handbook on the happy life. He identified three distinct sources from which humans can attain happiness. We tackled each source in a different part of the series. What a man is, what a man has, what a man represents. But we very quickly saw that only the first category is of real importance, because the others only exist for its benefit. The first category is all about developing your talents, enjoying and creating art, and committing yourself to study and reading. Money, the subject of the second part, only serves to free up time so you can do more of the aforementioned activities. Fame, the subject of the third part, is also just a byproduct of working on your talents. Creating a great work of art, to be enjoyed for centuries to come, will bring you lasting happiness. But in order to create such a work of art, you need to develop your talents and you need the time and money to do so. In this way, the work comes full circle at the end. We learn that nothing really matters for happiness except your personality, character and intellect. The greatest joys in life are mental and intellectual. A final word of warning for the ambitious young viewers of the channel. You should enjoy your youth and take care of your health. Spend your young years developing your intellect and talents and don't worry about much else. The time for fame comes later. Schopenhauer warns against the combination of youth and fame and calls it dangerous. Fame and youth are too much for a mortal at one and the same time. Life is such a poor business that the strictest economy must be exercised in its good things. Youth has enough to spare in itself and must rest content with what it has. But when the delights and joys of life fall away in old age, as the leaves from a tree in autumn, fame buds forth opportunely, like a plant that is green in winter. Fame is, as it were, the fruit that must grow all the summer before it can be enjoyed at Yule. There is no greater consolation in age than the feeling of having put the whole force of one's youth into works which still remain young. And with this word of advice from the wise Schopenhauer, who attained fame late in life, but only had a little time left to enjoy it. We want to thank you for watching this series, and we'll see you in the next one.